in our action, legal aspects of Marcellus Shale, County Commission Authority and Rights, and legal consultation. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I'd like to introduce Professor Bastrus. He's a professor at the law school at West Virginia University College of Law, and uh, you uh, teach uh, constitutional law. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the professor is, uh, or Mr. Bastrus, is the uh, counsel for the city of Morgantown in the present litigation concerning Marcel Shale. And I think we'll begin by having him tell us what the present status of that case is, what his role is, and what the various legal positions are concerning this case. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Um, the city of Morgantown, uh, you may have heard, enacted a, an ordinance this June, uh, which amended it already had a, a uh, permitting process for oil and gas wells in the city. There are a couple of uh, traditional gas wells that have been there for a little bit of time, there aren't that many, but we did have a permitting process. So we amended that ordinance in June to uh, ban uh, horizontal drilling with fracturing. This was occasioned by the fact that we had two uh, wells across the river from Morgantown, uh, about 1,500 feet upstream from our water intake system. Uh, and so the city council felt the need to act to uh, protect the water supply as well as uh, prevent other potential uh, consequences from horizontal drilling with fracking. Um, and I, I assume most of you know this, this process is drilling the Marcellus Shale goes down the well in Morgantown is 7,000 feet deep. Uh, and then they uh, start drilling horizontally and, and of course uh, uh, force water in at very high volumes and very high uh, velocity. Uh, this well will be used about 5 million gallons of water. Um, most all of which they intend to buy, by the way, from the city. So our, our utility board will at least make some money out of this. The, uh, the, the drillers then, of course, had already drilled um, one well and had started the second well. And so by the time the ordinance was enacted, it had invested $7 million, he said, into the drilling and casing of these wells. Um, so the, the ban, so they could continue to drill, but the ban uh, would not allow them to frack. And the driller, uh, not unexpectedly, challenged the ordinance. And, and, and this ordinance, by the way, applied within the city limits and within one mile outside the city limits, pursuant to a specific state statute uh, authorizing uh, one mile extraterritorial jurisdiction. The, uh, uh, and we had a hearing date set for a preliminary injunction on a whole bunch of different issues. But the parties uh, requested the judge to decide the preemption issue beforehand um, so that we wouldn't have to spend a lot of money on depositions and experts and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, uh, and, and save ourselves all that money. Um, and <laughs> So we submitted the briefs early, we expedited the briefing schedule, and then she took almost up to the day of the preliminary injunction to decide the issue anyhow. <laughs> and uh, what she decided was that, um, that state law preempted the Morgantown City Ordinance, that uh, the legislature in enacting what's called the oil and gas chapters had intended to, quote, occupy the field of oil and gas regulation, uh, and that there was a permitting process, and since the state had permitted this well, it had signed off on, the, on its safety and everything else, and then further we had to attach some conditions to, uh, to its operation, which the driller had agreed to, uh, to protect the water supply. So she cited all these uh, reasons to conclude that the ordinance was basically void uh, and, and unenforceable. The, uh, and, and of course, it, it was disappointing to the city because one of the reasons the city acted in the first place was the inadequacy of the state regulation, which of course is why the legislature uh, took up the Marcellus Shale issue this past spring. The uh, Senate did pass a bill, and the bill almost got through the House. It went through the, both finance and judiciary, but uh, it never got to the floor. And then, of course, the governor has issued uh, emergency regulations.
violations, which also are, in my opinion, inadequate. Um, and here's why they're inadequate, and here's why the city acted. The, um, the current regulations um, do not provide for a notice to local governments. They provide for a notice to local landowners, but that's all. There is no comment period, no public comment period. There are no siting provisions. In other words, there is no limit to where you can site these wells. And uh, in, in the current regulations or in the current statutes. Uh, and the inspector system is wholly inadequate. There are only 15 inspectors statewide. They're inadequately trained and inadequately paid. And the governor's regs do not provide for it. Don't have any money in them, of course, because that's the legislature has to do that. So, um, so the conclusion that the state law preempts uh, local governments was quite disappointing, especially in light of the inaccuracy of, of those state laws. Um, the city council has not yet decided whether to appeal. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the driller uh, voluntarily agreed to do a whole bunch of things to protect our water supply that were not required by state law. I think they're probably adequate. Uh, and Utilities Board has continued to uh, monitor what they're doing, and we're now negotiating to get some additional concessions to uh, deal with some other, uh, some air quality problems. Um, and my role in this case is basically been uh, being counsel for representing the city trying to defend the ordinance. Uh, I'm hoping the city will appeal because I think there are very important issues in the case about local government law, municipal law, and the inadequacy of the state law. Um, yeah. What level was the judge that made the decision? Circuit court. Circuit court? Yeah. Uh, no, Bob, can I ask you a couple of questions mm -hmm. just to kind of put the case in perspective and so that we as a county commission and as a county can kind of understand the various roles here. Uh, first of all, what is the authority, where does the authority of the county commission come from? How does the county commission have authority to do anything? And what is its authority vis-a-vis -vis the state of West Virginia, just in general? Yeah. Well, uh, the state can, of course, grant local governmental action. Uh, we had argued in, in Morgantown that the preemption needs to be explicit, and there wasn't any explicit so if, if the state wants to take over, it can, certainly. And, and there were preemption provisions, express preemption provisions in both bills that were in the legislature last spring. Um, but the county certainly, in, in my opinion, has authority to, uh, most notably, the 713 set of powers, uh, can prevent nuisances and can protect the water supplies, prevent uh, pollution. And, uh, and of course, promote uh, county interest in a variety of ways, which uh, most notably uh, tourism and the like would be, could be seen as consistent with having a bunch of oil wells or gas wells around. So I, I think there is county authority, and in, in my opinion, state law is not preempted from dealing with uh, Marcellus Shale. Of course, obviously, circuit judges disagree with that. Um, that, that's, in this particular context, I think the local government should have the, uh, the authority to, uh, to deal with it until uh, state law expressly grants it. Now, what about the, the, uh, the fact that uh, the, uh, the state has specifically said that uh, county government can enact legislation or ordinances dealing with uh, water or uh, such that we uh, would interfere with any kind of industrial process. Um, is it the DEP has said that in some statute or another, am I right on that or not? I, I'm just try I'm trying to put it in the context as to where, I understand that we can regulate public nuisance, but to my understanding, that would be an ordinance concerning dogs, ordinance having to do with some, something limited but that had not been touched on by the sovereign state of West Virginia in its acting about wastewater management or water quality, that kind of thing. Right. 
Well, um, traditionally in West Virginia, local government power has been narrowly interpreted by the state, and I think that should change. Okay. Um, and I think that should change for both cities and counties because both entities are strapped in terms of their ability to both uh, regulate and raise revenues. We are, I think, 48th and 49th in the country with regards to municipal and county flexibility. And I, I think what we ought to be arguing is that the county has the power with whichever one you want to pick, the nuisance. And I think that just defining nuisance to include only problems of dog would be hand, hand strapping the county. And it ought to be able to do with uh, threats to the public uh, welfare and health and environment and so on. Unless expressly framed. Expressly framed, yes. And does, it, does not the proposed legislation expressly preempt county action? Uh, what was proposed last spring will be the, the um, there's not a there is there are uh, both House and Senate committees currently working on bills um, and I, I believe they both include preemption but um, there are ways away I understand from uh, the Senate's bill is quite different. Now, let me ask you another question about the tension between action and inaction by the county commission concerning this issue. The first tension, of course, is between the county and the state. The second tension that concerns me is between the commission and the landowner and the matter of what we call a taking, sort of the constitutional prohibition against taking property for public use without just compensation. And how does an action by the county commission, if it took such an action to prohibit uh, a particular aspect of drilling, fracking, which you would consider dangerous, how does that expose the county or how does that play against the landowner who has, in fact, in many cases, willfully and wantingly entered into a contract to do this particular activity? That's about a three-minute answer. Um, well, it's been a quite a, more than a thirty-minute consideration. Yeah, well, it's um, it would be an issue, I'm sure, to to uh, ban fracking. Um, and I, I can tell you there there's there's it, it would be difficult to predict how that issue would come out. I can tell you what the analysis would be. Um, certainly, the, there, there is there are, there are different levels to takings analysis, um, and, and takings, of course, says that uh, if the government takes your property, it's got to give you just compensation. Um, and when the easiest when government comes in and takes your land, builds a road on it, <coughs> physically takes it over, that's easy. If the government uh, builds a road in and ends up flooding your land, that's also a, a takings, and, and that's pretty easy. Uh, if the government authorizes physical operation, uh, occupation, then that's easy to take. But uh, this would be more like a, what's called a regulatory taking. Yes. Yeah.